and let it run for a day or so. And we'll see how much these modifications have improved the efficiency of this fridge. It's been just under two days, so let's go back down into my messy basement and see how much energy we're using. Turn on my thermometer. It's still at three degrees, so it's holding the same temperature as before in pretty much the same environment, and we are at 0.77 kilowatt hours. Probably make it to about 0.8 if I let it run the last uh, couple hours of this 24 hour period. So this refrigerator did use about 0.5 kilowatt hours per day, and now it uses 0.4. That's a 20% improvement in its efficiency. And all I had to do was use one can of expanding foam and a piece of scrap foam that I had sitting around. And after just a few minutes, this refrigerator uses 20% less energy, with pretty much no negative effect, uh, except maybe an extra inch of depth. Now some of you might be thinking, isn't that dangerous to use expanding foam like that? I mean, that stuff's flammable. It says right there on the can that it's extremely flammable. Be careful. So using it on electrical appliances probably isn't the best idea. And I'm not going to argue with that directly. However, I will state this, that expanding foam is made with hydrocarbon propellants and all the bubbles inside the foam are very flammable when it first comes out of the can. But in time, natural diffusion replaces those propellants with uh, air, essentially, and the hydrocarbons dissipate. So natural diffusion really makes the stuff much less flammable after it's fully cured. I have here a piece of fully cured foam. This uh, was kind of left over after I was done, so I'm just going to put this on the can and burn it. Now the foam is flammable, there's no doubt about that, but it's not really flammable like uh, some people are worried about. If I can even get it to burn here, it's kind of cold in my garage and butane lighters don't like working very well when it's cold. So you can see that it does indeed burn, but it's not vigorous and uh, it might even self-extinguish. So it is flammable, but it's not explosively flammable and uh, there are fire retardants in it. I'm sure better brands there it went out all on its own. I'm sure better brands have better fire retardants in it. This is about the cheapest brand you can possibly get but you can see that it is not horribly flammable. Now that being said uh, do this at your own risk. I, I'm not going to say it's a great idea to surround electrical appliances with it but it's really no more dangerous than uh, many other substances that you could put around it. So I think I've effectively demonstrated that I have increased the efficiency of this very standard mini fridge by about 20% with a very simple hack. It only took a few minutes and a few dollars and this refrigerator is 20% more efficient. But that is not good enough for me. This is about making this refrigerator as efficient as we possibly can. The next obvious thing to do is to better insulate it. It just has a standard blow molded plastic interior, some low quality foam, and this uh, sheet metal exterior. So let's put some insulation around the bottom, the top, and the two sides. I'll leave the door this way for now because I want to be able to open it. So I need to find myself some insulation material. Now the obvious choice would be to use more of that one inch closed cell foam that I used on the back. However, this is the only extra piece that I have and I don't really want to have to buy something for this. I want to use what I have laying around. And uh, I suppose I could just set this on top, but that wouldn't do me a lot of good. So let's find something else that will work a little bit better. <clears throat> if a coat can keep me warm, it should be able to keep this refrigerator cold, right? And it's not like you're going to need it during the summer, so maybe it's a good place to store your coat. All right, maybe not. Uh, oh. oh! Everybody needs toilet paper. Maybe I can just surround this thing with a toilet paper fort. I mean, that stuff's got to be pretty good insulation, right? Except, not really have enough. Um, 
I need to find something else, I guess. I got this. And there is just one more step in this process of making this fridge super efficient, at least compared to other mini fridges. So the back of this is reasonably well insulated. This piece of foam isn't quite the right size, but there is some foam on the back and underneath by the compressor. I have it setting on top of this R13 insulation. It's crushed down to something less than R13 on the bottom, but it's pretty decent. And I have it wrapped on all sides. So the front is still bare. It keeps it looking somewhat presentable. I think in reality, if someone is going to go through lengths like this, you'd put some sort of foam in front. Uh, but for the sake of this test, I'm just going to try insulating the sides, and we'll see how that works. Now, this is kind of ugly. You probably wouldn't want this setting in your living room this way, but keep in mind this is just a test to see how much difference insulating the exterior of your refrigerator helps it be more efficient. So let's plug it in. And I have my now very stylish mini fridge plugged in. I have my watt meter going and the temperature. It's at about 9 degrees Celsius right now and I'm just going to let that uh, stabilize at hopefully 3 or so again and uh, then I'll reset this meter and we'll wait another day or so and see how much energy this new and improved fridge consumes. It's been yet another day so let's go again into my messy basement and check out our new and improved refrigerator. So we can see that we are still at about uh, two or three degrees Celsius, which is good. And we're at 0.36 kilowatt hours. It's been around 24 hours. Let's see how long exactly. Uh, actually about 26 hours. That makes this about, oh, uh, 0.33. Uh, okay, it just incremented, so 0.34 kilowatt hours. In any case, that's about 20% improvement once again from our 0.4 kilowatt hours that we had in 24 hours. So we improved the efficiency by about 20% by increasing the insulation on the back, as I had showed in phase one. In phase two, we added the insulation to the bottom, sides, and top. And that increased the efficiency by another 20%. So now we need to increase the efficiency further. And I think you already know where I'm going to go with this. Now, obviously this is not practical, but I'm just demonstrating what you could do with a more practical insulation technique. Uh, probably putting some sort of foam in front of the door, but uh, in this case I'm just using what I have on hand. I have some R13 fiberglass insulation, so I'm just putting that in front of the door. And I'm going to do the same thing again. So I'm going to let this run like this for another uh, day or two, depending on what my schedule happens to be for the next few days. 
and we'll see how much energy this consumes. I'm going to take my kilowatt hour meter and reset it and I'll get back to you on what the results are this time. Alright, well it's been a few days and this refrigerator has been running like this for well, let's check out how long. Here's my electricity meter and uh, it's used 1.53 kilowatt hours and it's been running for 116 hours. Now you can do the math yourself if you'd like but it's a uh, 0.31 or 0.32 uh, somewhere in there I think kilowatt hours per day so adding this insulation to the door for some reason didn't make a huge difference it helped by about 10 percent over having nothing in front of the door uh, so I'm just gonna take this insulation and put it back where it belongs on my wall I forgot to mention that the temperature in the refrigerator with this insulation in on the door did go down it was at about three and it's been hovering around zero or one with the, thing, with the same thermostat setting. So possibly some of my efficiency has been lost because the refrigerator is colder. I could redo this test by turning the thermostat up slightly, but in any case, I got about a 10% reduction in energy use by insulating the door, as well as the rest of the fridge. Either way, we've gone from one half kilowatt hour per day down to a little over 0.3, and that's not too shabby. But there's still one more thing that I would like to try. So I'm going to take this insulation, put it back on my wall, and then we'll move on to that. In case anyone's wondering, this is the inside of the refrigerator. And here is the icebox, freezer, whatever you want to call it. And it doesn't really have much ice on it, so ice accumulation is not the cause of the efficiency, um, of failing to improve the efficiency. Now it did just turn on, so this is a good time to move on to the uh, next item, which is how I'm going to try to improve the efficiency this time. So I noticed that this is my kilowatt hour meter, and uh, the refrigerator just started up, so the energy draw is going to be a little bit higher than normal, but if I go to, ooh, that's really high. Well anyway, that'll drop a little bit over time as it cools off. I do have the door wide open, so it won't cool off very quickly, but if I go to watts, you'll notice that it is, uh, well, it's here and dropping, <clears throat> as you would expect, because it just turned on. It'll probably settle at 80 watts or so eventually, but if I go to volt amps, it's at almost 150. So the power factor, which is the phase difference between voltage and current, is very, very poor. And that's indicative of this refrigerator being designed for a much lower operating voltage. The voltage coming into it is 120, 125 volts, and it doesn't seem to like that very much, because the wattage is here, keeps dropping, uh, because the uh, evaporator is cooling off, that's what you'd expect, but the uh, volt amp stays pretty high. So I don't know if that's because this refrigerator doesn't have the proper uh, PFC capacitor in it, or if it's because it's designed for a lower voltage. If we look at the power factor directly, 60 hertz, it's only 0.55, and that's pretty sad. So I'm going to try one more thing yet to increase the efficiency of this refrigerator. In general, refrigerators run quite a bit more efficiently off of a lower input voltage. And I have a way to do that here. I have this transformer down here. I'm going to plug this transformer in, and we're going to use that and see what we can do for this refrigerator. I have my variable auto transformer plugged into the wall through this extension cord and my kilowatt hour meter plugged into it. And as I rotate this knob, you can see that the uh, voltage decreases down to whatever I want it to be and increases up to whatever I want it to be. Uh, hmm, it's probably not good for it. Anyway, up and down as I uh, adjust the knob and I'm going to put this to about what my wall voltage is and plug in the refrigerator. Seems to have some trouble starting. I'll let it, uh, the pressures inside the refrigerator equalize. 
Uh, in any case, I'm going to take this plug and plug it into here once the refrigerator starts and the power draw of the refrigerator stops dropping. That'll take a minute or so. I'm going to turn the camera back on and I will adjust the voltage going to the refrigerator and let's see what it does to the wattage draw and to the power factor. The refrigerator is running and it has stabilized at about 80 watts and my voltage is 123 volts. <clears throat> And in my house, that's about what I get from the utility company, 120 to 125 volts. So let's see what happens when I turn the voltage down a little bit. So I turned it down to 113, and now I'm drawing 78 watts. So let's keep going. How about 106 volts? Now I'm drawing 75, 76 watts. But the volt amps is still really high. So it seems like this refrigerator isn't designed all that efficiently. I'm just going to leave it on watts here and continue cranking the voltage down and we'll see what happens. I can hear the pump starting to slow down now. Uh, we're at 90 volts, that's obviously too low. So I'm just going to bump this back up to 100 or so. Something more reasonable. And now it's running at full speed again. So we're taking 75 watts instead of 80 watts. Well, that's not a huge improvement. So really we can only get 5%, a little bit more, um, out of this by decreasing the voltage. But let's keep in mind that this transformer consumes about 10 watts just sitting here. So if you have an inverter <clears throat> or can otherwise choose your voltage, choosing a lower voltage will cause your refrigerator to use less energy. But from this experimentation here, I can tell that it's not even worth bothering. With a test, I know that it's only going to save another... Uh, 5 to 10 percent, something like that. It's not nothing. It would get us down to about 0.3 kilowatt hours. Uh, possibly even a little bit less, but that's about where it's going to be. So there you have it. We have effectively increased the efficiency of this mini fridge by about 40 percent with some pretty simple and inexpensive changes. And from my measurements, this refrigerator, if you never open the door, and run it in about a 60 degree Fahrenheit environment will only consume 100 kilowatt hours per year. That's about $10 worth of electricity. Now if you're using solar power or something to power this, that could be pretty significant, saving 40%. The changes that we made were, of course, insulating the top, bottom, and sides with some insulation. I used fiberglass batting, you can use whatever. More importantly, in the back, I took this one inch closed foams, uh, closed cell foam, and put that behind the condenser. And down here around the compressor, I insulated that with some spray foam. So it only cost me a few bucks, and that was the result. I thought some of you might be interested in how to increase the efficiency of a standard mini fridge, so I made this little video, and uh, hopefully some of you find it useful. Thanks for watching.